This morning I want to speak to you, and I have to warn you, I don't have a road map. The Lord does. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Amen. But this morning, I believe, yesterday, I, I actually was started studying uh, for today. And yesterday, as I was mowing my yard, I heard the word recap. So that's where I'm going. We're going to recap last Sunday. Last Sunday's message was titled, The Sin That Saved Me. Um, I was even questioned by someone, how did I back that up with the Bible? And of course, once I explained how sin saves us, they understood. Because we know that the synopsis of the message was a sin that is not revealed cannot be healed yeah. right? right because James teaches us to confess our sins to one another that we may be healed right. amen uh, last week I spoke about Jonah being found in the belly of the well and coming to the acknowledgement that he was running from God yes. right he was a rebel he was running from God. Uh, the Spanish people say, patas pa que son, you know. What are feet for? To run, right? <laughs> Why not run from the Lord, right? But this is what Jonah was doing. He was running from God. He was running from the purpose. He was running from the things that God had called him to do. And the Lord handled him in the way the Lord saw fit. But we know that in the belly of the well, Jonah came to the acknowledgement that he was running. So as he ran, what happened? The Bible says that he looked where? Towards the heavens. Mm -hmm. And the Lord answered. And the Lord spit him out on dry land. Right? I'm just recapping. And then if we start Jonah chapter 3, we see that... And the Lord spoke again. Come on. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to somebody today again. Yeah. You're in the belly of the well. And the only way you can, you can ever find your, your way to where you're supposed to be, sometimes you have to be told again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, 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 am, I, am I preaching to the wrong church this morning? <laughs> But I also spoke about the prodigal son and how the prodigal son uh, asked God for, I mean, asked the father for his inheritance because, you know, he was, he was entitled to, to something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And the father graciously gave the prodigal son what he wanted because that's what fathers do. They give what their children want. But we also know that if we do our due diligence and we study the scripture, that the, 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 the son who went off to a foreign land and he squandered his money, I don't know if he smoked it or he drank it or he gave it to a woman or he gave it to another man. I don't know what he did, but I do know one thing, that he squandered the very thing that God had for him. But then the scripture teaches me that there was a moment in his life that after squandering everything that he had been given, the responsibilities, everything that he had been given, the opportunities, everything that he squandered, the Bible says that he found himself and he came to his senses. And it kind of reminds me of Jonah, how Jonah remembered what God had said and all of a sudden the prodigal son remembers what the father had said. And the Bible says, that he came to his senses. And he acknowledged that I, I have sinned against my father. I have sinned against heaven. I have. And that sin saved him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Man, the sin saved Jonah because he acknowledged 
the sin saved the prodigal son because he acknowledged, man, I'm, man, I'm good, man, I've messed up. I've been doing this and I've been doing that and I've been going over here. I've been chasing him and I've been chasing them and I've been and all these things and I, I've lost track. And can I tell you there is something about losing track if you can just come to the have, if you could just build up enough courage on the inside of you to say, I goofed up, God. Will you forgive me of my shortcoming? Will... That sin might just save your life today. Oh, come on. Somebody. That's a recap. Cowboy. God wants this me. Progressive sanctification. The key word is grow. Who said grow? Brother Sylvester, open up the service. God came and delivered us from the grips of the enemy so that we may grow. So we may not progressive sanctification. That I may grow to be more like God, not more like the devil. Amen. But if you don't never confess it, you'll never possess it. I want to add one to this. I believe, listen to this, Matthew, this is, this is just, can't remember, I have no road map. This came to me. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him saying, you are also with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I don't know what you're talking about, what you're saying. Verse 71, Matthew 26 Verse 71. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath, I don't know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came and said to Peter, Surely you are also one of them. For your speech betray. Ooh, come on now. Oh, somebody needs to hear this. Your actions will be. Yes. Yep. Wow. Your speech define. Oh, man. The way you talk, the way you dress. The talk somebody needs to hear. The way you present yourself. The mm -hmm. Listen to this. Listen to this. And a little later, those who stood by came and said to Peter, Surely you're also one of them, for your speech betrays you. Verse 74. Then he began to curse what I say. Boy, look at here. I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Some translations say that when he said that the last time, that Jesus stopped and went like this. I believe Jesus is looking down today. Look what he says, Sylvester. Immediately a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, who had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly. Wow. If there was ever, a, if I was going to go to a fight, if there was ever a man that I wanted on my side, it was going to be Peter. Because Peter done disrespected God in such a way that he done raised his voice and even cursed. He said, I don't know that bird, man. Why are you blaming me, you bird? Right? Because it's what the Bible says that he added a curse word. He was so confident. Yeah. How is it that you can know me on Sunday and not know me on? Yeah. Mm. How easy have you? Who said it? Have I tasted the goodness of God? How easy is it for you to 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 to, oh, to lose? The taste of God's goodness from one day. T.D. Jake says it like this. You don't have enough Holy Ghost to make it to your court. Yeah, that's right. Your denial 
before you open the door handle. And this is where we find Peter. Because what looked like was going to be victorious to Peter, all of a sudden takes a turn. And he says, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And Jesus stops and looks. And he remembers. And that's what I want to talk about. If you don't ever remember what God said. Mm -hmm. What did I say last week? The prodigal son repented. Right? His position had taken him so far down that he repented. What does repent mean? That, that means that I do a, a, a 360. That means that I turn all the way around and I go in a different direction. But I want to add something to that. Repentance not only means that I change. Repentance means that I can now see sin the way God sees sin. Yeah. Yeah. Because until you can get to the point... To where you can view sin the way God views sin. I promise you one thing. You quit meddling with that stuff. Yeah. You quit lingering around there. You quit running in circles. You. Yeah. No. Right. I know we serve a loving God. A merciful God. A just God. A repenting God. We serve the God of God. I mean I understand this. But we also know that we serve a God that says one day I'm going to separate the weeds from the wheat. I'm going to separate the real from the fake. I'm going to separate the mm -hmm. goat from the sheep. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Come on, man. Don't be Amen. scared. Don't be, Amen. be excited. I'm trying Amen. to take you somewhere. I'm trying to spare the gift on you. You want to go somewhere with God? Yes. Listen. What else did I say last week? What did, the, what did the psalmist say? Test me, Lord. Search my heart. If there be any wicked way in me, lead me unto everlasting life. Listen. Did, I, man, do, do you know that your presentation, listen to this, your presentations before God will determine but let me say it like this. Your presentation before God will move the hand of God in your life. Yes. Oh, it'll close. Amen. I know it's not a popular message. YouTube. Mm -hmm. The Lord will close. Mm -hmm. But what I said a couple of weeks ago, if the Lord don't approve of it, why should he bless it? Mm, come on now. If the Lord doesn't approve it, why should he provide for it? If the Lord doesn't approve of it, why should he be involved in it? Boy, this is good. I got all this from a ride on lawnmower. Amen. Amen. You can pray anywhere. Amen. Amen. And I, I still don't know what's in there. I'm just going, remember, I ain't got no road map. Shame on me. But like I was saying, if there was anybody I wanted on my side, it'd be Peter. Because Peter is like, uh, whichever way he was going, he was going 100. Right? right. I mean, we know that because it would be, right? That's, I mean, I want him on my Peter, you come and you stand closest to me. Because you're the man. But here's the thing about it. Here's the key. And here's what I want to conclude with today. Here's the key. Do you know the ones that usually fall the hardest are the ones that are usually have are the most proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why I brought that up. The ones that usually fall the hardest are the most proud. God says, I resist the proud and I give grace to the humble. Yeah. Amen. I need you to understand this. This is important. Now, think back. Do you know any brothers and sisters in Christ that you've been, you know, y'all you, was high-fiving and all that, and y'all was doing the Holy Ghost revivals in your house and all that, and now you can't find them? Why? Because those that fall the hardest are the ones that have the most pride. And God says, I resist the pride, the proudful, and I give grace to the humble. 
And until a man can humble himself before God. Mm. And you know what's so beautiful thing about this? That God gives us the grace and the ability to decide yeah. if I want it for me or against me. Woo! What's the scripture, mama? Fall into the wrath of... Uh, come on, I haven't learned it yet. Uh, the scripture. It's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of God. Wow. God gives us that. I have the, you know, I, you, you, yeah, you go ahead. I have the right to go out there and pop my collars you know, and stand up there like I'm uh, like televangelist. I have the right to. I can do that. I can go over there. And I can preach. And I can preach against hell, fire, and homosexuality, and, and drug addiction. And, and I can preach, and I can preach, and I can preach. But if I never humble myself, my words will reach this wall right here. Because humility is the key. Second Chronicles. You don't have to turn it. I ain't going to be there long. Okay. Second Chronicles 32, verse 24 through 26 reads like this. In, the, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And he prayed to the Lord. And he spoke to him and gave him a sign. Listen to this. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him. Man, Hezekiah was sick, right? Second uh, Kings 20. The Bible says the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah and said, You're going to die, dude. Get your house in order. Make sure your children are serving the Lord. You're fixing to die, dude. And Hezekiah prays. Second, second, second Kings 20. Better yet, I encourage you as your homework, Second Kings 18 through 21. Read that. And you'll learn how Hezekiah was a man that, matter of fact, King Hezekiah came in. His daddy was, was the king before him, and he was a disgust, disgustable king. And then the one after him, Manasseh, was just as bad. And here you find Hezekiah in the middle, and, and he, he, he finds himself, and he's dying. I had the prophet Isaiah come and said, hey, man, you're going to die. Get your house in order. But the Bible says that Hezekiah prayed, right? And, and, and then so before, the Bible says that before uh, Isaiah even left, then he came back. And he came back with a word for Hezekiah. And he tells him, hey, this is what the Lord said. The Lord said he heard you. And the Lord's going to heal you. He says, as a matter of fact, I'm going to add 15 more years to your life. Hmm. <laughs> right? And then Hezekiah, you know, I don't know, I got any people, assigned people in there. I don't have any people that want signs. Everywhere you go, give me a little sign, Lord. Yeah, all right. Show me, Lord. And this is what Hezekiah did. Say, well, he tells the prophet, well, well what's going to be the sign? I mean, how am I going to know? Because Isaiah told him, the Lord's going to heal you. He's going to add 15 more years, and then three days, I want you to go back to the temple. Well, when do I know to go to the temple? You know, I said, just go read it. And the Lord does give him a sign. He holds the, 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 the sun, he holds it back 10 degrees, right? And, you know, the sign people that always want to sign, the Lord said, I'm going to move it forwards. And Hezekiah said, well, that ain't going to work for me because I need to go backwards. <laughs> you know, y'all here like, I done showed you ten times. And like, no, 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 just write it for me, Lord. But anyways, to make a long story short, all of this takes place. But look at this in verse 25. This, and that's the, that's, that's the account given in 2 Kings. I wanted to concentrate right here. Look. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him, for his heart was lifted up. Mm -hmm. Wow. God healed him. God delivered him. God gave him victory. But the scripture says, look at what it says. It says, but Hezekiah did not repay the Lord for the favor that was shown him. Wow. But then he goes on to say this. Look what it says. He says, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore, listen to this, therefore wrath was looming over them. Ooh. You, you know any of them people? Mm -hmm. Can't go from point A to point B without something happening? No, it's just, yeah, man, it just happens. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, accident is like following you. Like, <laughs> yeah. 
And like, like you can have, like, you can go to the check, the, the mailbox tomorrow and get a $10,000 check and then next week you'll be broke. Because it's looming, looming over you. I don't like preaching these messages. Look what he says. If for it was wrath looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. So not only will it loom over you, it will loom over those. Oh, come on now. Man of God, I'm speaking to you now. It only, not only looms over you, it looms over your household. It looms over your neighborhood. It looms, it says Judah and Jerusalem. That means you could be the solution to change. Wow. Verse 26. Here's a good one. Then Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. He and the inhabitants, he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Wow. Humility. Right? Peter saw Jesus look and humility struck him. Mm -hmm. Jonah found himself in the belly of the well and humility struck him. The prodigal son finds himself in the miry pit or in the hawk pit and he humbles himself. Humility is the key. Move in the hand of God. Now, I look through the comedy again and I see pretty people. Not pretty people. Yeah, you're pretty too. <laughs> I see pretty much everyone here knows about God. Right? I'm not speaking to a new believer with this message. I'm speaking to you who say, yeah. okay. who you who were up with Jesus, mm -hmm. you who were with Jesus, mm -hmm. listen to me, when he multiplied the fish and the bread. I'm talking about you who had been with Jesus when he turned the water into the wine. I'm talking about you who was with Jesus when he said, Lazarus, come forth. That's who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to the new believer. I understand that when you're a baby in Christ, you fight things and you But I'm talking to you that walk with Jesus. Talk. I'm talking with you that was found in Mark chapter 3 when he says, I've given you the ability, the capability, the authority to cast out demons and preach the word of God. I'm talking to you. Will you humble yourself before God and allow Him to use you for the things of the kingdom, yeah. not the things of the world? Yeah. One more scripture and I'm going to get out of your way. Second Chronicles 7, 14. You can probably quote it for me, right? Everybody loves Second Chronicles seven fourteen, mm -hmm. especially those that are fighting against everything that's going in the world. Oh, if my people would just humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal from heaven and I will deal in that. Right? You can quote that. Let me read it for you. It's the word of God. Amen. This is the word of God. So the rest of you, I got the very thing right here. <laughs> 2 Chronicles 7.14, the word of God reads, 7.14, if my people, mm -hmm. come on, who's I talking to? Mm -hmm. 
I ain't talking to it. I'm not talking to the new believer this morning. I'm talking to my people, he says. If my people who are called by my name. Amen? Will humble themselves. Say humble with me. Humble themselves. Look, not humble others. Not humble the LGBTQ community. Not humble Disney. Not humble the president. Not humble sister so-and-so. No, he said humble themselves. If my people, you call yourself a Christian, I have news for you. You ought to be humbling yourself before God. Quit trying to humble the world and humble yourself. Y'all want to run? I'm going to run myself. <laughs> Amen? Humility, church. Humility. Look at it. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Peter humbled himself and the Lord healed him. Jonah humbled himself and the Lord healed him. The prodigal son humbled himself. Humble. You know what humble means? Start looking inward and quit looking outward. <laughs> quit looking out there and start looking in here. You want to grow? Quit looking out there and start looking in here. Change my heart, oh God. The psalmist said, test me, Lord. Search my heart if there be any iniquity in me. Search me, Lord. Got too many Christians who want to change the world, but won't change themselves. Want to model the church, but won't model Jesus. Want Christ in Christmas, but not in Christmas. It bothers me. Amen. I ain't going to sit here and act like it don't bother me when I see a brother or sister in Christ that's way, waving the Israeli flag in their yard. And I, it bothers me. Because I serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I serve the God of Revelation, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning to whom there is no end. This is the God. And when I see him being mistreated, when it bothers me. And I view sin just the way he does, and it bothers me. I believe God is speaking to us today. You humble yourself. He says, pray before you stand up anywhere. Get down on your knees. The apostle Paul says, I don't preach to no one I haven't prayed for. I pray for you, church. I pray for you. Every one of you. That came up last week. Amen? Amen. Carry this behind my wallet. Everyone that confessed your sins before Christ yesterday, last Sunday. I pray for you, man. Mm -hmm. You want to reach your family? Pray for them. You want to change community? Pray for the community. You want to uh, change everything you don't believe in? You want to fight against Buzz Lightyear? Pray! Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. What's it? Prayer moves the hand of God. Don't sit back and wish the, 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 the fire and brimstone. No, humble yourself. Get on your knees and pray. You know, it's harder to pray than it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seek my face and another thing. Seek the Lord. Yes. Not sister so-and-so. Not all you. Sister Facebook. Hey, let, let me, I, was, I was thinking yesterday about Facebook. There's like 2% of this good. Right? <laughs> now, everybody quotes something on Facebook. Who's to say that the author of that quote does not believe contrary to you? But you believe it. And you don't learn about them. 
So don't seek faith. Seek God, he says. You have a problem? Seek God. Not Facebook. I use Facebook too. I'm not going to say I don't. But I, I guarantee you, if I go right now, but it's a lot of people that are not connected to the body of Christ. They're not in church. They're sitting in their pajamas. They don't hit view or watch like they are. Mm -hmm. And we're listening to them. Yeah. And we're thinking they're speaking life over me. Yeah. You're thinking that they're in control of your life. You're thinking that they're really praying for you. You're thinking that mm -hmm. Amen. quit seeking yeah. and start seeking God, church. Yeah. Humble themselves. They seek his face. God will, he says, hear from heaven. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, no. Mm -hmm. First, let, let me let me read this right now. I don't know what you're going through. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to act like I do. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But God knows. And if look at the David, the, the psalmist writes, Psalm 30. I will extol you, Lord. Oh, Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Right? When you go to Exodus, right? what is uh, Je Jehovah Rapha? He's our healer. And he tells the children of Israel, I see the misery, he says, I see the misery of my people. He says, I hear their cries. He says, and I have come to deliver them. I have come to heal them. Oh Lord, you brought my soul from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pits. Here it is. Let me paraphrase this. The psalmist is saying, I'm going through something, Lord. I'm, man, I, I am going through something. My enemies are stacked up against me. Temptation has overtaken me. My flesh overrides me. Sin is my master, not my slave. The psalmist is saying, I'm struggling with something, but I cried out to you and you healed me. See, this goes back to the sin that can save you. If you would just cry out about it and quit looking God is not no Easter bunny. He don't hide things. Yeah. Yeah. Quit treating God like an Easter bunny. He don't hide eggs. He don't hide blessings underneath rocks. He don't do all these things. All you have to do, he said, if my people will humble themselves, seek my face, pray. He says, man, I'll heal their land. You brought me my soul up. From the grave. Man, that, you know what that teaches me? That he got a glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. You ever got a glimpse of... Whew, I could just see the psalmist like going down and like you can see the, 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 the embers. <laughs> like... Right? Because that's what he says. He said, I cried from where? From the pit. 
-hmm. from the grave, he says. I, I believe that he was almost in hell. Mm -hmm. But he says, I cried out. And you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive. But look at this. Then he invites everybody to join him. Not to hell, but to rejoice. Mm -hmm. He says this, sing praise to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? He said, what I said last week, God doesn't want us to admit our, confess our sins to shame us, but to heal us. Yeah. Right? And the psalmist here has been healed. He's been delivered. His soul has been brought up from the grave and he is not going down to the pit. Then he invites people and he says, sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger was but for a moment. What does that teach you? You can make him mad. Here's a good one. This is what we clap, okay? His anger is for but a moment. His favor is for life. Wow. We may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen? When does joy come? I was hoping you was going to say when you confess. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this. The word endure there. The word endure there means lodge. Right? What does lodge mean? Go to sleep. Right? Old school. There were hotels. They were called what? Lodges. Lodges. Weeping may lodge or loom for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Joy comes from rejoice, right? Rejoice in all things. You can only rejoice when you have victory. Then you can do as a psalm and say, and invite everybody and say, mm -hmm. sing praises because God saved me. He healed me. He delivered me. He brought me out with the grips of hell. He delivered me from my temptation. He delivered me from all of these things. Then joy comes in. If not, you have someone in your house lodging. If it's not confessed, stand to your feet.